Hello, welcome to Lace on Race. We do a regular video series. I'm Lace, the Executive Director here at Lace on Race, laceonrace.com, and the brand new Lace on Race Cafe, including the bistro and also including Chef's Table. I gotta tell you, as is often the case, this is not the essay I set out to write, nor the video that I set out to give. Sitting here on a cloudy, rainy Saturday here on the coronavirus couch in Encanto, California, I had planned an invitation to chef's table, and I will get to that, I promise. But as I sat down and contemplated what I wanted to say to you all, <clears throat> particularly to the people, the relentlessly reliable people who I hope will come in to pull on their aprons and learn to serve ever deeper and learn to chop ever faster in the Lace on Race Cafe, my mind went to those, another cohort, to these people that I hold very tenderly. And I'm probably talking directly to you. I'm talking about inactive members of Lace on Race. You know, I was thinking, it would be so easy in this new phase of Lace on Race to focus almost exclusively on those who have said a full-throated yes to concentrate my time on those who have already registered for the Lace on Race Cafe, those whose thoughtful comments in the bistro and in the different dining rooms have brought such lift to my heart and who have made these last 23 days in this first month of January such a great joy. It would be easy and even understandable to leave those who are not yet ready behind. I mean, keep the takeout window open of course, which is what we're going to be calling our Facebook page. We'll feed them frozen fries, we'll feed them stale burgers that have been left under a warmer for six hours, but we would pour the greatest measure of my time and my staff's time and my leadership team's time to the knowledge and to the mentorship going mostly to those who said yes. And I will. We will. I promise. Those who choose to dine with Lace on Race in the bistro and even to stir pots and dice potatoes and polish silverware with me here at the new chef's table will get my best. A different kind of best than I've been able to give so far. There's something galvanizing about people eagerly wanting all that we have to offer, who don't see my suggestions and directives and instructions as something that's overwhelming or onerous, but rather as challenges they know that they can live up to. It will be amazing not to parcel out half measures, to hear not, oh, this is all too much, but instead hear something like, more please, give us more. I look forward to having to work hard to keep up with all of you. But even as I stir and chop and polish and inhale the fragrance of a dozen pots bubbling, of a dozen cakes cooling, even as I watch the broiler and taste the sauces, still I remember those of you outside. You know, there are a few different cohorts in Lace on Race, all of important, all of you are necessary. All of you are welcomed. <laughs> there are those of you who dip in and out, who come to the takeout window and order fries and a hot dog now and then, who eat standing up alone underneath the awning just outside the takeout window. I see you. You don't know it but I reserve the very best potatoes for the fries that you're gulping down. The hot dog you slather with mustard and eat in three short bites. Well, you know what? That's actually a sausage that I made by hand. I put my heart into every takeout bag. As we curate and write and make videos that I know you see, but do not yet comment upon, I have you in mind too. 
I will never fail to give you my best. And one day, one day, you will know that the warm bun in your hand is not from a plastic bag from Smart and Final or Kroger's, but was actually rolled out and shaped and baked inside the kitchen one by one. <clears throat> and then maybe, just maybe, you will venture just inside and you will begin to wonder what the patrons in the various dining rooms are eating. Good brown bread in the boomer dining room, skillet bread in the African diaspora, sourdough and helping professionals. You will hear the clink of glasses and see how each dish has been plated and presented with care. And you will see good linen napkins instead of scratchy paper. And you will want the stew and the good green salads and the corn pudding that you see in the millennial dining room and in the BIPOC dining room and in the LGBT dining room. And you will wonder if it's too late for you. You never made a reservation. But guess what? Guess what? The hostess will beckon you over and you will see that your name is on the list. Your table is ready, she says. You're just in time. There's always been a place for you when you were ready. And now, here you are. And then, in a flash, you're seated, an orange aid is poured, and a basket of warm breads are set before you, and a menu is presented. See, see, we knew you would come. And then there are the mass hordes of you, the 9,500 of you or so that I get so much flack about on Twitter from my many detractors. Looking at you, Ms. Norad. Hi, hope you're doing well. She says all the time, where are all those people you brag about, she says. And other people go, yeah, where are they? And I just smile inwardly. Oh, they're here. You're here. And even if I don't see you, I deeply feel you. Whatever it was that compelled you to click like or follow Regardless of which platform you find us on, you are here. They might not know it yet. They might not get the gestation of something stirring within them. You might not get the gestation of something stirring within you. But I get it. I see it. <laughs> I think about you daily. Those of you who picked up a menu once, but never fully entered in. Sometimes I scroll down and I'll look at your faces at everyone who's liked and hearted Lace on Grace, and I hope for you, I'm willing you to remember that impulsive thumb click you did a week or a month or a year or even three years ago. I know that you stuck around. I know you've done so for a reason. I know that even if your minds don't remember, that a piece of your heart remembers, and I feel that deeply. You are part of my story now, part of the story of lace on race, and I am greedy. I'm greedy. <laughs> I'm so greedy. I want each and every one of you. In fact, in the upside down world, of Lace on Race, all of you who may not even remember you clicked like or heart or follow, you are the people who are actually the most important of our community members and you are part of our community even if you don't feel it or acknowledge it. Oh, let me say that again. Let me say that again. You are still a part of our community even if you don't feel it or acknowledge it. Yeah. You know, it's hard to tease, tease you apart. You know, those of you who are lurkers from those of you who are forgetters. It's hard because I cannot locate you. And you sort of know that. <laughs> That's why you're lurkers. 
Still, I reserve a place for you. If all you want is a cup of water from the takeout window, so be it. But, hey, wait, stop. Would you like to try a cookie? Fresh baked? All you want is fries? Okay, okay, that's fine. Here's some homemade ketchup. We give you more than you ask for, than you even knew you had a taste for. We always have enough. We always meet you in the eye as we give you fish and chips wrapped in newspaper. We give you our best, even if you don't know it. We know we are offering you something that looks the same as every other window, every other takeout joint, but it's different and you know it. We know that entering into the bistro may very well change you and you know it too. If all you can do is smell the fragrance, that's fine for now. We'll be here. Metaphor, metaphors aside, this is the reason I am so committed to the Western Star. For those of you who aren't sure what that is, to the sustainability and the health and the longevity of lace on race, even as I'm fixed on my, on our North Star, lessening and mitigating the harm endured by black and brown people, perpetuated by white people and by white supremacy. I know how long it can take for some to be fully ready and willing to come in and to fully partake. I see on main board and on the website, and I, even with those, even with those on Twitter who have made something of a hobby out of impotently bashing me in the space we have co-created. Hi again, Miss Norad. Those of you who tell me that it, that it, that it took weeks or months, or even years before they dared to venture a comment. It took months or weeks or years because of apprehension and, and a little bit of uncertainty and not sure they could hold up to the standards that we set, but also something else. It's a risk. They're poking their heads out means that they're going to be known by me, by the rest of the community. They also wanted to make sure that we were as resilient and relentlessly reliable as we exhort community members to be. There is nothing like going all in on a space that dies on you. I've, I've done that. I've done that in some ways. Um, I remember buying a gym membership and it took me forever to choose to buy the gym membership. I mean, look at this situation. This is not this is not the body of a gym rat, but I finally did. I plunked down my money and I was ready and that place closed in two months. It wasn't just about choosing the behavior change. Behavior change can sometimes be relatively easy. What's harder is being able to trust that all your eggs that you are putting in this basket, that the basket will hold. For some people, they see it right away, but for some people, it takes weeks and months of coming back and not saying anything, coming back and doing their assessment, coming back and seeing if we're still here. And more importantly, if we're still here, holding to the ethos that we talk about over and over and over and over again, Catherine Norad. I get it. We are asking more and differently than any other space you have found. And so you walk by or you drive by, you never really venture in, but you're always on the lookout <laughs> to see if the lights are still on, seeing if you can still smell Eduardo's brisket or Leonie's Jamaican flavors or Holly's amazing fish cheeks with that sauce that I really, I don't know what it is, and Holly isn't telling anybody in the kitchen yet, but once you taste it, you got to come back. Well, guess what? We're still here, and we'll be here tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day. You can trust in this space. Dare I say, you can trust in me. One of the reasons one of the reasons the health and sustainability of this space is so important to me is that we need to be ready 
but whenever someone goes from walking by to ordering a burrito at the takeout counter to venturing in and taking a seat in the bistro to to coming back in the in the in the kitchen with that help wanted sign we had in the window and they're holding it and they're shaking it and they're saying i wonder i wonder if you'd take me as an apprentice i wonder if i could have a seat at chef's table yes Yes, and yes, we've been waiting for you. Here's your apron. Here's your paring knife. Start peeling these apples. So we can and we will talk about Chef's Table. I'm going to be doing a, a lots of videos this weekend. So we're going to be talking about Chef's Table specifically. Yeah, this magical, ever-expanding piece of furniture that has a space and a chair and a place for each and every one of you. But for now, we hold space and we wait in anticipation for those we were born to serve, all in service to our North Star. Welcome.